When we pick up a game for the first time, our initial goal is just to get to a point where we're not complete trash at it. The first time we play, we're making tons of mistakes and just trying to survive the initial learning curve. But eventually, as we keep playing over and over, we start to get the hang of it. Slowly, we stop making embarrassing mistakes and we start getting to a point where we're more comfortable. And sooner or later, we reach a point where we've completely mastered all the easy stuff. Every game starts to feel easier and easier. And of course, at this point, you're not exactly a professional player yet. Your mechanical abilities are good, but not exceptional. And your game sense is decent, but you still struggle to rely on it in tough situations. But at this stage, you're comfortable with your skills. You do still want to get better, but you assume that they'll just come with time. As long as you keep playing over and over, you will slowly get better, and perhaps after a year or two, you'll finally reach a high rank. And this highlights a very important principle when it comes to improving your gaming skills. Time and efforts correlate with skill. Hence why professional esports players have invested 5,000 to 10,000 hours into their respective game. But does this mean that it's purely a numbers game, and that more time always equals more skill? Well, if this were the case, then why is it that some people play for years and years without really getting that much better? And why is it that we can sometimes hit these skill plateaus that feel like they're impossible to get over? Is this just a sign that we've reached some maximum capacity for skill and that we're held back by our own genetics? Or is there still hope? Time and efforts are some of the greatest indicators for predicting success, but sometimes we seem to reach a certain skill ceiling that holds us back. And we see this with players who've invested thousands of hours playing game after game without really improving. To explain what's happening here, let's look to a study that might offer a few answers. Let's imagine for a moment that you have to go for surgery, and the hospital that you're going to is letting you pick between two doctors, one who has been working for 30 years, and another doctor who's been working for only 10 years. Now chances are, you'd be a bit more attractive to the person who has more experience, and you would assume that more experience makes them more qualified. Well, a systematic review of clinical healthcare evaluated performance of physicians in association to their level of experience. Out of the physicians evaluated, most showed an overall decrease in performance with the amount of years in practice. In fact, 96% of them showed a neutral or negative correlation between amount of experience and their performance. Now chances are these physicians in their early years actively learned a lot, and chances are more years of experience led to greater and greater skill. But at a certain point, they reached a level of knowledge and skill where they were comfortable, where they could rely on previously learned skills and comfortably coast through their day-to-day -day life. And once they hit this point, their overall performance started to decrease. Now when it comes to competitive gaming, most players approach the game in the exact same way. This approach is about just playing until it feels good, without a specific goal or focus, and in the initial stages of learning, this works fairly well. It's fun, it doesn't take much strategy or effort, and it leads to immediate results. But it's limited once you get to a point where you're good enough. This is when most players stagnate and hit skill plateaus, only making small improvements on occasion, yet overall decreasing their skill despite playing for more and more time. So how do you avoid this pitfall? How do you maintain your progress and stop wasting time? Well, the issue is that playing game after game isn't the ideal environment for improvement. To get better, we generally need three things, including optimal challenge, proper feedback, and the opportunity to try things again when we don't succeed. Now, the first of these is finding the ideal level of challenge. We need to find a perfect balance where we feel challenged to apply our maximal effort, yet not too challenged that we don't get the opportunity to actually practice. But as you are likely aware, most matchmaking systems struggle to find the perfect level of challenge for us, meaning that we spend our entire gaming sessions with only a few games playing against an equally skilled opponent. And this issue gets even worse when we consider team-based games, where optimal challenge is dependent on other factors like your teammates. 
these other players can easily make a match far easier or harder than is ideal for actual improvement. Now the second key factor is understanding when things go wrong. Improving at the game relies on a cycle of constantly learning from our mistakes. We need to both make the mistakes, but then be able to understand what went wrong and how to correct that mistake. But in a normal game, when we make a mistake, we will often notice the results of it, but we won't have the time to pause and actually understand what specifically went wrong or how to fix it. As a result, we learn to ignore mistakes or misdiagnose the issues that led to them. And the third key factor is the ability to try again. Learning is best done when we can try something again, make a mistake, and keep doing it until it feels comfortable. For example, when watching professional Smash players like Leffen, you'll notice how in his streams he'll practice the exact same move over and over and over again until he feels that he's perfected it, or at least feels a lot more comfortable with it. But in a normal game, you can't just stop and repeat a certain move until it feels good. When we're against a weak opponent, we can easily coast through the entire game without much effort at all. On the flip side, against an opponent that's better than us, applying too much effort just feels like a complete waste. And even against the perfect opponent, we don't really get a chance to learn from our mistakes or try something over again. As a result, we can easily get stuck in this sort of autopilot mode, just playing games over and over with minimal efforts and minimal improvement. And this autopilot mental state is what the physicians in the study have likely fallen into. They may not depend on competition for improvement, but they've reached a point where they can get by in a sort of mental autopilot, going through the motions without any improvement. And for you, this means you'll hop into game after game, playing in the exact same way and feeling completely stuck in your level of skill. And if you feel this way, you can be sure that the feeling is accurate. You probably are stuck in a loop of playing over and over without improving. So how exactly can you break this cycle? Well, in short, you need to add to your gaming routine better methods for improving, starting by finding the ideal opponents. For one-on-one -on -one games like fighting games, this might mean finding a training partner at equal skill level that you can practice against on a daily basis. Or if you play a team-based game, this could mean scrimming against equally skilled teams. But of course, we also need to develop a better understanding for when things go wrong. And this means reviewing matches to break things down and understand exactly what caused certain issues, as well as how you can fix them going forward. As a bonus, you could work with coaches who can provide you with feedback and advice in real time during actual games. And of course, we need to be able to try things over and over again until we get it right. So practice certain skills outside of the game in controlled environments where you can try skills over and over, correcting your mistakes and testing different approaches. Most players who hit a skill plateau will assume that they just need to put in more time and effort. And when that fails on them, they'll start to believe that they're just genetically limited to a mediocre level of skill. But by actively adjusting the way you approach your skill developments, you'll quickly be able to break the cycle of wasting time playing without progress. And it seems then that if you can integrate any of these lessons into your regular schedule, you'll be able to punch through the skill plateau holding back other players. And breaking through this skill plateau is exactly what it takes to reach an exceptional level of skill. Now, if you feel like you're stuck at a skill plateau and you want to get more advanced tips beyond what we mentioned in this video, then check out our new step-by-step -step course for ranking up fast in just 66 days. It's designed to take you from an average level of skill to a high level of skill in the fastest time possible. It includes over 30 short videos that you won't find on our YouTube channel, all including advanced strategies and scientific research for improving your skills faster. So if you've been struggling to rank up and you want to play with a much higher level of skill, then check out the course for yourself. You can find a link for it in the description below. And of course, this video is also brought to you by our very own supplement called E-Advantage. 
In short, E-Advantage is a cheaper, healthier, and much more effective alternative to energy drinks. If you want to get insane focus without the jitters and sugar crash, and you want to play at the peak of your abilities during important games, then I highly recommend E-Advantage. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can find a link for it in the description below. And of course, I hope you guys loved this video. If you did, then leave a comment down below and let me know what your biggest takeaway is. And as I usually do, I'll be responding to every single comment posted within the first few days, so let me know exactly what you think. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.